Now, um, our next guest is a very special guest who was once in the movie industry working as a sound mixer. He won two Oscars, one for Dances with Wolves and one for Glory. He's the first African American to receive multiple Academy Awards in any category. And guess what? Like I said, he's my cousin. His name is Russell Williams II, and I'm proud to know you, Russell. Russell, how you doing? Well, you know, you are, um, I understand you are an artist in residence at American University where you earned your BA. Tell us exactly what an artist in residence means because I don't know any, I, don't, I have no idea what that means. Well, the in residence status uh, at most universities was uh, created to take into consideration people who could come to a uh, university or college and provide uh, specific skills that may not fall under the heading of your standard professor or professorial headings. In other words, someone who teaches history is a professor of history, but what do you do for someone who, you know, like myself, has worked in the movie business many years. So, you know, you, you do have professors that teach journalism and teach creative writing and screenwriting, but, you know, my career kind of straddled technology as well as creativity. Uh, some of the earlier artists in residence were literally artists. I mean, they were literally painters or musicians or people, and they would come in and do a semester or two and maybe create a symphony or work on a new sculpture and, and show the students their particular technique. So as our university curriculums expanded, they expanded the uh, category or the name artist in residence to include, you know, more types of people other than just people in the arts themselves. Mm. So do you teach sound mixing then? Well, I teach one sound design course, which in my particular experience, I, I feel it's more important to, to teach the students who are really more interested in being producers and directors uh, how, how sound is very difficult to control when you're, you're trying to do something in a movie or a television environment than teaching students who actually want to do sound. In other words, they would want to do the actual recording uh, and setting up the microphones and doing the stuff that I actually did when I was in the business. I think it's more important nowadays that the students who want to actually create the films, who know a lot of things about what you will see on the screen, and they know a lot about what the characters will say when they get to that point, but they know very little about how difficult it is to control sound outside of the studio. And, and most students and lower budget independent films, the sound is the worst part of the project because they kind of take that aspect of the movie for granted. Uh, the rest of my courses are more uh, based on independent finance promotion pictures or also understanding the business of show from an executive point of view. I have a class called Executive Suite, which meets in the spring, and we do a lot of video conferencing between our students on campus and some of, in most cases, our alumni who are either well-placed in Hollywood or New York, but it's not always an alumnus, but a lot of cases it will be. And then in the summers, I normally come to Los Angeles with the students that want to do internships in the movie industry. That's an eight-week course. And uh, we took a two-summer hiatus so we could try to find a way to get the housing costs down because it's pretty expensive to spend eight weeks in L.A. You, you definitely need a car and you definitely need a place to stay. Plus, you have to pay for the credit hours. But it's a real jump start if you want to be on the business side of the entertainment because you get to meet people who are actually in the music side of the business, the television side of the business, and the motion picture side of the business. Well, you know, since no, knowing that you were going to interview with me, I haven't looked at movies the same way since. I'm very aware of the effects of the sound to the movies. Tell us exactly what a sound mixer does. Well, in, in a movie environment, Jeanette, what, what the, the process would look like uh, for your listeners is it's pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, the director would assemble the entire crew and the cast say first thing in the morning, say six in the morning or seven in the morning, and we would stand around and look at the, the cast perform whatever portion of the movie or TV show we're going to try to capture that day. 
So the cinematographer is working with the director to figure out where the camera is going to be to pick up this angle and that angle. Are we going to be wide and see the entire room? Or are we going to be in tight onto somebody's hands? Or, and then pull back to include a full body shot? Well, while they're deciding what all of that's going to look like, someone who did what I used to do and my team will decide where to place the microphone to record whatever's being said. And if there, if there are no spoken words in the scene, then we'll try to figure out what sound effects would be important for the editor to have later when they actually assemble all this, uh, you know, either on an avid or during Final Cut Pro, or if they're still cutting on film, you know, the so-called old-fashioned way. You want to have several different tracks of not only people speaking, but what else, what else is the character in that TV scene or movie scene hearing? Is someone cutting the grass outside? Are you at the seashore? Are you inside the car listening to some music? Are you in your bedroom staring at the ceiling and you don't hear anything? So all of those kind of considerations would come under my former job title. Well, Russell, um, since you're in education, let's talk about career opportunities for the next generation and also the issues with raising money to, money to shoot independent films. Can you talk a little bit about that? All right. Well, uh, Jeanette, I think that, uh, say, for instance, at the time I went to American University in the 70s, it was really important to go to film school. One, for one reason, would, would be that very few individuals could afford to buy the cameras and sound equipment and editing equipment, you know, to make your own movie. I mean, we did have Super 8 back then, but, you know, in order to get something of good enough quality to put on the big screen, you needed, you know, 16 millimeter film camera or 35 millimeter film camera. And we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars of an investment, and maybe you have talent enough as a filmmaker, maybe not. Now the tools of production are a lot more inexpensive, so you could go to Best Buy and get a pretty good HD camera, you could get the Final Cut Pro editing suite on your laptop, and you know, you could download a script writing uh, program so you could actually write your screenplay in the proper format and go out and make your movies without film school. But I think that the benefit of film school is to know, okay, what has come before you in terms of the culture. Uh, there's a certain language and pace that movies and TV kind of follow. And so you should know the rules so that when you do break the rules, you know why you're breaking them and, and, and at what point and does it help tell the story. I think that's one of the few things that an expensive college education in film actually gives you now because we see so much more film and TV uh, today than say when I was growing up in the 50s and 60s and you see so many different types of production and you have your music videos and you just have people shooting things on their home video cameras and putting them on YouTube that's all part of what the audience is exposed to but you know you still reach into your pocket from time to time and go to a movie theater and see something that maybe cost someone a hundred million dollars with a lot of computer effects so, you know, if you are computer savvy and love graphics and know how to render those type of images, well, that's a job opportunity. If you came from, say, a music background or even a radio background and you actually want to record sound or create sound, in other words, when you go to an outer space film, like an avatar, so a film that takes place on another world, well, what does that world sound like? So they need people to create those things that you hear in the movie. And there's still some old, uh, what I would call legacy careers that still have legs in the sense that, you know, actors are going to be wearing clothes as long as we're still using real actors. They're going to need